In 2022, Qatar was chosen to host the world's largest international football event, namely the World Cup. Everyone knows how grand and luxurious the World Cup event was held by Qatar, which cost more than 3,000 trillion, surrounded by extraordinarily beautiful stadiums, but behind the glimmering of the World Cup, far from the bright lights of the star athletes and supporters who adore the World Cup, there was a dark and sad story that not many people know about the struggle of the construction workers of the stadiums, and the story will be discovered in this documentary, The Workers' Cup. This documentary talks about the struggles of immigrant workers to build the extraordinary and stunning stadiums in Qatar which were used for the World Cup. There are many sad and inspiring stories in this documentary, such as the story of how the workers didn't receive their rights, despite their job there, low salary, unhealthy workplace and behavior, and even the coercion and oppression received by the workers during their time working for the monumental stadiums. In the history of humankind, there were numerous magnificent and extraordinary monuments. Several of them were out of this world, like the pyramids in Egypt, the Great Wall of China, or the Borobudur Temple in Indonesia. Behind the undoubtedly amazing construction, there were always stories of thousands or maybe 10,000 workers, day and night, struggling for the completion of the construction, and maybe, most of the stories were not documented and remained undiscovered throughout history. The same thing also happened in the construction of the stadiums in Qatar. The amazingness of the building spoiled every pair of eyes looking at it, but at the same time, hiding stories of the struggle of the workers behind the construction. Qatar was originally chosen as the host of the 2022 World Cup in 2017. Upon the announcement, Qatar began announcing vacancies for construction workers for the making of the stadiums and looked for workers abroad. They successfully gathered thousands of workers from all over the world, some of them from the African continent, the neighboring countries like India, other Asian countries like China and Nepal, and even from the faraway continent of America. Sadly, most of the workers were not voluntarily come for the job. There were big numbers of workers that were scammed by the job agencies, saying that the salary was high, or even promised a completely different job. Some of the African workers were promised to work as athletes, but the sad reality was different. They were scammed to work as laborers. Moreover, they were forced to work long hours for the stadium construction, a very challenging job, and sadly, underpaid. It is said that they could work 12 hours a day every day. The harsh environment and hopeless jobs like what the immigrant laborers in Qatar had as time passed, bring down their potential and hold back their optimal performance, so the government, in order to maintain the enthusiasm of their workers, took the initiative to hold a football competition called the Workers' Cup. Several teams from the companies who worked for the Qatar World Cup preparations were made to compete in the competition. Each team had its own background stories and problems. One of the stories came from a young, 21 years old Ghanaian named Kenneth, the captain of his company's team named GCC. Kenneth was a brilliant player back in his country, and the only reason he ended up in Qatar was thanks to his agent who deceived him. His agent promised him a job as a football player in Qatar that would be paid as much as $1,500. Unfortunately, when he arrived in Qatar, instead of being a football player, he had to work as a laborer. He couldn't even return to his country, Ghana, because he had no money. So, he worked as a laborer and fight for his dream as a footballer there. He showed his best in the Workers' Cup, hoping one of the team scouts in Qatar would put an interest in him. Another story came from another player named Umesh. He came all the way from India to work in Qatar for economic reasons. Umesh, who really loved Manchester United, was a husband and a father of two sons whom he named Rooney and Robin, a former player and a legend of Manchester United. This made him a provider for his family and needed a lot of money to raise his two children. He thought that going to Qatar and working as a laborer there would receive a big sum of money, but turned out, all his expectations were wrong. He made no more than what he made as a laborer back in India, but again, because he had no money and was hindered by a contract, he could not go back to India. Even so, he kept fighting and never give up. He chose to fight to provide for his family back in India. The next story came from Padam, a worker who came all the way from Nepal. In order to be able to perform optimally in the Workers' Cup, he fought hard and went on a diet until he managed to lose 8 kilograms. It was told that Padam had been working as a laborer in Qatar for 8 years. Sadly, it turned out that before he even worked there, back in Nepal, he was already married, and since his departure from Nepal to work in Qatar, he had not been able to meet his wife. Padam had done various ways to make sure that his wife could go to Qatar and live together with him, but that cannot be done because, in Qatar, there are laws saying that if immigrant workers wanted to bring their family to Qatar, they are required to gain a monthly salary no less than $2,500, while as a laborer there, Padam's monthly salary was no more than $400. 
Like it or not, he had to let go of his hope to live with his wife for the past eight years, but he didn't lose hope yet. He kept collecting money, enough for him to return back to Nepal and met with his wife again. The story moves on to Paul, one of the laborers from Kenya. The reason why Paul decided to go to Qatar was that at that time, his country seemed to have a conflict, which caused the situation to appear to be not safe, judging from a lot of chaos that happened there and also a lot of unemployment. Because of that, he thought moving to Qatar would make his life better, but what happened was the other way around. Paul said that life was no easier than his life in Kenya. Things were very uncomfortable and not it was not easy. His tough life in Qatar hindered him from telling his family about what he was doing because Paul didn't want his family to worry. For a long time, he also had no friends in Qatar until finally, Paul was drafted into the GCC football team. There, he got acquainted with his new friends. One moment, Paul told his teammate David, another laborer from Kenya, that he had a woman problem because it had been a long time since Paul tried to approach a woman. He told David that in the last few months, he had approached a girl from Qatar named Mariana. He told David that he knew about Mariana through Facebook. He had never met Mariana at all, but the good news was, by that next week, Paul would date Mariana on Friday. Hearing Paul's story, David encouraged his friend. David also said that laborers also have the right to be happy, but he advised Paul not to have too high expectations because they were both workers and it's only natural for a woman to walk away from them the moment they know they were just a laborer, but David kept reminding Paul not to give up. Another story came from a player named Samuel from Ghana. It turned out that Samuel was an extraordinary player. He once played for his country's national team, Ghana U14 national team. Not only that, Samuel even had played in the Division 1 Ghana League, but unfortunately, he was deceived by his manager. All the salary he gathered while playing as a professional footballer was taken away by his manager. Finally, because of that, Samuel did not have money. He even had to borrow some money to provide for himself. Finally, he decided to go to Qatar, but instead of becoming a football player in Qatar, he actually worked as a laborer. The GCC team had to struggle in the Workers' Cup tournament. It was sad that in the first match of the group phase, GCC was on the losing side, being slaughtered by 5-1. to one. The next day, Kenneth, as team captain, gathered all his friends to encourage his friends by saying that despite the loss they had in the first match, they still had a chance to win by winning the next game, and the only way to win is to be more active in training. Sadly, the working hours of these workers which cost them 12 hours of their time a day made it difficult for them to practice because they must be very tired, even before doing the practice. That concerned Kenneth who immediately told his friends that he would ask the company for giving them fewer work hours so that the team would be able to practice and asked for the place to practice. He also said that if he failed to make the company approve his request, he will resign as captain because he felt that he didn't deserve to be a captain if he couldn't help his teammates. Kenneth's sweat met the result. He succeeded to get fewer work hours for his team and a place to practice. Along with his friends, they finally were able to train even more. Sure enough, after practicing more, Kenneth's team's performance got better and in the next match, GCC managed to win over their opponent. In the next match, GCC also secured their position for the knockout round by winning over their opponent. In the knockout round, GCC continued to fight and win until finally, GCC advanced to the semifinals. In the semifinals, GCC was facing a strong opponent and had to play until they headed to the penalty round. Sadly, they had to lose in the penalty round with a score of 4-2 and that was the end of their fight in the Workers' Cup. Even though they didn't win first place, the team was still very happy, because at least, they got the money they needed and also the highlights from the media. Eventually, Kenneth and David's agents met them and praised their performance in the Workers' Cup, but unfortunately, they still hadn't been able to enter the Qatar League. The agents told them to keep practicing because they promised them if one day, there was an opportunity, they would both be offered a contract to play in the Qatar League. Samuel was awarded the best goalkeeper in the Workers' Cup. Padam decided to return to his country, Nepal, to live with his wife again. At the end of the documentary, Kenneth said that one day, he will tell his grandchildren that he was part of the workers who built the great stadiums in Qatar.